In this video project, you will learn the basics of isometric drawings in AutoCAD using this drawing. AutoCAD have the 2D workspace, the isometric workspace, and the 3D workspace. These three workspaces can be found under the model space. The paper space which is another layout area, is dedicated for printing purposes. In the paper space layout area, you can select your paper size, lay out your drawings as you want before sending it to the printer or to the plotter. But for a quick printing, you can print from the model space using the window option from the print dialog box. And the same principle applies whether you're printing a 2D drawing, an isometric drawing, or a 3D model drawing. An isometric drawing is not a 3D solid object. It gives you an illusion of a 3D object. We can say it lies between 2D and 3D objects. A good knowledge of using 2D workspace, isometric workspace, and 3D workspace will help you in your design skills. The first step is to load AutoCAD. Before we get started with the drawing, let's select the angle that we want to work with. Next, we're going to select the angle that we want to work with. Type O snap O S N A P. Press the enter key. A dialog box will appear. From these tabs, click polar tracking. From the increment angle, click this pull down menu and choose 30 degrees. Click. Next, make sure that your polar tracking is turned on. Next, ensure that polar tracking is turned on. Or, you can press F10 on your keyboard. Or, you can hold down the function key on your keyboard before you press F10 for some keyboards. Here, I will check this box to turn on polar tracking. Next, on this tab, click object snap ensure that you click select all next click ok next let's turn off the grid mode by unchecking this icon i will click this you can also use f7 on the keyboard or you hold down the function key on the keyboard while you press f7 this depends on the configuration of your computer Next, let's switch from 2D workspace to isometric workspace. Observe the crosshair. This crosshair will change when I switch from 2D workspace to the isometric workspace. To switch from 2D to isometric, I will click this ISO draft by turning it on. If I click this, you can observe that our crosshair has changed. Now we are ready to work in the isometric workspace. Next, I will click the polyline tool. Click. Next, I will pick a point here on the screen. Click. And you are going to see that this is tracking. This is 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, 120 degrees, 150 degrees. This is 180 degrees. This is 210 degrees. This is 240 degrees. This is 270 degrees. 300 degrees. 330 degrees. And we are back to 0 degrees, equivalent to 360. Next, I will track this 30 degrees. Once I see these dotted tracked lines, I will enter a required value. Next, let's draw a cube box in isometric workspace. Click the line tool or the polyline tool. 
click pick a point on the screen track zero degrees type 100 press enter twice pick the line tool again or the polyline tool click locate the midpoint of this line click track 30 degrees type 100 press enter track 90 degrees and type 100 press enter twice next click the line tool or the polyline tool click locate this midpoint of the line which is the end point of this line click track 150 type 100 press enter track 90 degrees type 100 press enter on the keyboard press enter again to cut it next pick the line tool or the polyline tool click this point track 90 degrees up type 100 press enter twice next pick the polyline tool click click this point click this point click this point next track 150 type 100 press enter on the keyboard next click this endpoint click and press enter on the keyboard now you have this next pick the line tool click locate the center of this line the midpoint click and click the opposite midpoint click press enter on the keyboard next i'll press enter again to activate the last command which is the line tool or i can click the line tool click locate this midpoint click locate the opposite midpoint click press enter next pick the line tool again click this midpoint click the opposite midpoint click and press enter on the keyboard circles do not work fine on isometric workspace for example if you click the circle command and pick a point the circle is usually a 2d circle i will press escape on the keyboard instead of the circle command we're going to click ellipse and from this pull down menu i will choose as this end click next i will type i for isometric and press enter on the keyboard next i will click the center of this line which is this point the midpoint click and release your hands from the mouse you're going to have this next press f5 on the keyboard with some keyboards you need to hold fn on the keyboard before you press f5 while some keyboard you just press f5 like this and it will respond you can see that we have three planes for the iso circle i'll press f5 again now i need this with this i will type 30 on the keyboard and press enter i will click this line and press delete on the keyboard we should have this next i will click this pull down menu from the ellipse I will choose as this end next i will click this iso circle or i will type i on the keyboard and press enter this time around i will click iso circle next i will specify the center of this line click this is not the plane that i'm looking for next i'll press f5 on the keyboard and this is not what i want i'll press f5 again now this is what i want i will type 30 on the keyboard and press enter next i will click this line and press delete on the keyboard next i will click this pull down menu from the ellipse tool choose as this end click next i will type i for isometric and press enter on the keyboard next click the center of this line the midpoint click this is not the geometry that i want i'll press f5 on the keyboard this is not the geometry that i want i'll press f5 again on the keyboard now this is what i want i will type the value for the radius of the circle which is 30 i will type 30 and press enter on the keyboard next i will click this line and press delete on the keyboard now i have this next i will click all these lines only the lines 
next i will click line weight this pull down menu click i will choose 0.30 millimeter click next i will click this by layer and choose a color any color of your choice press escape on the keyboard if nothing happened after you choose a line weight to display the thickness of the lines type line weight on the keyboard and press enter this dialog box will appear make sure that display line weight is checked then you click ok you will see the line weight that you have chosen here press escape on the keyboard next zoom a bit open by using your roller mouse and by panning the roller mouse next i will click this circle at the top i will click copy from this center click make sure your hands is straight come down to 70 degrees type 10 on the keyboard and press enter on the keyboard press escape or you press enter the second time now you have this next type trim press enter twice click this part of the circle trim it off and press enter on the keyboard next click this circle on the left click copy locate the center of this circle click direct your hands 30 degrees inside type 10 press enter twice next type trim press enter twice this outer circle trim it off and press enter next click this circle click copy locate the center of this circle click track 180 degrees type 10 and press enter twice next type trim press enter twice and trim this part off and press enter on the keyboard next type hatch and press enter on the keyboard this menu will change change this from pattern to solid click and choose any color of your choice let me choose this magenta click click this point and press enter on the keyboard press enter again let's choose a different color let me go for yellow click here and press enter on the keyboard press enter again change the color to green click this part and press enter on the keyboard press enter again this time around i will go for red color click click this part click this part click this part and press enter on the keyboard and we are going to have this next let's dimension this from this pull down menu choose align click click this point click this point and click anywhere out here next press enter again click this point click this point and click out like this use your roller mouse to position this well next press enter again click this point click this point and drop it here press enter again click this point click this point and drop it here press enter again click this point click this point and drop it here press enter again click this point click this point and drop it here now we have this next click each of these dimensioned lines type p r o p and press enter on the keyboard this dialog box will appear especially on this left hand side scroll down under test and from the test height you will see 2.5 delete this 2.5 type 5 and press enter on the keyboard we're going to increase this again delete the 5 let's go for 8 type 8 and press enter let's leave it at 8 now the dimension is visible press escape on the keyboard now we're going to close the property dialog box cancel this close next for this hundred i'll press escape on the keyboard i will pick 
the line tool pick this point i will track this is 30 degrees next i'll press escape this line just help me to know how i will align this dimension next i will type dim edit and press enter on the keyboard next click on oblique click on this this will lie down 30 degrees this will also lie down 30 degrees so i will click both of them press enter on the keyboard next type 30 for 30 degrees observe how both of them will lie down along 30 degrees press enter on the keyboard now we have this next i will click the line tool from this point i will click i will track here i can see 150 press escape on the keyboard next i will type dim edit press enter on the keyboard click oblique next click this and this both will lie down at 150 degrees press enter and type 150 press enter you see both now lies along the path of 150 i will click this and stretch this for both to be aligned next these both are aligned but i will click this and align this properly now i'll press escape on the keyboard next for this hundred press escape on the keyboard click the line to pick a point track down to 70 degrees press escape next type dim edit press enter next click oblique click this press enter on the keyboard type 270 and press enter now you have this this will also lie down 270 degrees press escape on the keyboard type dim edit press enter click oblique click this press enter type 270 and press enter now you have this click this and pull this down so that both will be aligned press escape on the keyboard next highlight all this and choose gray color press escape on the keyboard now you are going to have this next click on this line and choose a different color make this gray press escape on the keyboard next pick the line tool pick this point and track 150 click any point here click and press enter pick the line tool again click this point track 30 degrees off anywhere along this point click and press enter next from this pull down menu choose angular click this line out here and click this line and you're going to have 30 degrees click this and leave it there next click angular again click this line here and click this line click and leave it here next click this and click this both type prop for properties and from this dialog box scroll down from the test section under test height delete 2.5 and increase it to 5 and press enter this is now visible close this box and press escape on the keyboard next click this click this and change it to light gray press escape on the keyboard next type zoom and press enter create a window around this click next click this line click this line press delete on the keyboard now you should have this